Next up, and excuse me for a moment while I grab my notes. Um, next up, we have one last talk before lunch, and it is from Fred King, um, who many will know as, well, whenever you hear Fred King, you hear the words, avenging chicken. Um, and so I will read his bio, and um, you'll see, I'm sure the chicken will make an appearance. So um, for the benefit of anyone who um, is not visual, you'll be um, hearing some laughter and can be rest assured that there is a rubber chicken in the photo. <laughs> so about Fred King. Fred received his MSLS from the Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C. in the waning years of the previous century. He has had an awful lot of jobs since then, and for the past 15 years, he's been a medical librarian at MedStar Washington Hospital, just down the street from the Catholic University. He was introduced to Koha around 2012, and in 2013, he migrated his library to Koha 3.12. He also developed the MedStar Authors Catalogue using a slightly modified version of Koha, and um, he served as one of the founding board members of Koha US. First as a member at large, and then member at large slash unsupported. He didn't do anything in this position, he says, but he did it very well. <laughs> so, his experience migrating a small library convinced him that Koha could be a cost-effective way for other libraries to automate. And so, I'm going to leave the content of its talk to speak for itself. And um, Fred, thank you so much. We look forward to hearing it. Submitted for your approval. A computer chip the size of my fingernail. On it is an entire operating system and integrated library system. All of this runs on a computer that costs less than $100 and is the size of a deck of playing cards. Are we in a library? Or have we entered the twilight zone? <laughs> That's a reason. Right, start over. Pat, pat, pat. Bugger. Well, so much for a dramatic entrance. Let's start again. Wish I could be in New Zealand. I hope you're all having fun. I wish I could be anywhere except my basement. Um, green screen. Also, working in my basement for the last seven months is probably what's made my asthma so bad, so it sounds like I'm about to die. Um, I'm not quite dead, so let's get on with it. So, as the name implies, I am Fred King, I'm a medical librarian at MedStar Washington Hospital Center in Washington, D.C., and this is my traveling companion, The Avenging Chicken. Actually, we're at home right now, so I think we can take our mask off. That's what we look like. And my presentation is called, Got a Hundred Dollars? Get an ILS. Uh, before I continue, I should probably point out that although I am using MedStar Health official brand, uh, any opinions I express are only mine, um, not necessarily represent my employer or any of my colleagues. So this pr presentation will show you how to use COA, a Raspberry Pi, Mark Edit, and a chicken chicken's optional, to create a fully functional ILS. Some of this may look a bit familiar. Um, this is an update of a presentation I gave last year, back in the days when we could travel to places. And I also recycling some material I gave at Killer US um, last month. And yes, yeah, some of the jokes are recycled too. Picture the cats, new, same thing. There's the cat. We always need a cat photo. 
So why a Raspberry Pi? Well, it's an incredibly complex computing platform, as you can see by the technical manual over on the right. And the latest version is approaching a desktop and computing power. In fact, it might be that this already has the computer power of this, which is a PDP-11. They're readily available. Basic model costs $35. A lot of Raspberry Pi projects around. Why not an ILS? And I wanted to see if it was possible. Start out, well, I'm starting with a Raspberry Pi 4B with four gigabytes of RAM. Um, the largest one has eight gig RAM now, but that would have broken my budget. Uh, it also has wireless and Bluetooth and a few other goodies. Um, have a 32 gig class 10 micro card, the official Raspberry Pi case, and the chicken seems to have gotten tangled up in the official Raspberry Pi power supply. And if you're wondering what those blurry round things are, they're US quarters, just to give you an idea of the size. If you can persuade the librarian of the lake to uh, hold forth a barcode scanner designating that you are the one true cataloger, uh, that's a good thing to have too. It's not in the budget, but it will save you a lot of typing. And here I'm going to admit the cheating a little bit because anyone who takes this on is going to have a drawer full of things, including write cables, keyboard, etc. You probably have a monitor with HDMI and a network connection and another computer. But another computer is necessary only to uh, create the SD card with the operating system, but I used it for a few other things. I should also mention that the SD cards are small and if you have a dog that thinks anything that falls on the floor is hers, um, well, fortunately they're small enough that you don't have to try to find it, though my budget does not include replacements for the card. That is. Steps, install the operating system. Install and configure COA, obtain a list of ISBNs, use MarkEdit and Z3950 to harvest Mark records, edit the records, upload them to COA, then add the items. Install the operating system comes first, as you might think. Uh, www.raspberrypi.org has a lot of good background information. Last year, there was not an Ubuntu image for Raspberry Pi. There is now. I downloaded the 64-bit. Ubuntu also has a tutorial on how to install Ubuntu on your Raspberry Pi, which is very helpful. You download it. it comes in an XZ file. You extract that with 7-zip from 7-zip.org. And as you can see in the lower right, the original XZ file is 692 megabytes and it expanded to a bit over three gigabytes. And download Win32 Disk Imager to create the image. And there you are. For the command line installation, I'm using the directions from the Koa Community Wiki, uh, Koa on Ubuntu Packages. Okay, so operating system's installed. So you log in, you have to change your password. Changing myself to a super user. By the way, I've speeded this up just so I can fit in my allotted time. Okay, Echo, Deb, what you have to include is Arch 386, I386 in brackets. Otherwise, you won't know what you're looking for. 
the new update, upgrade, yes. Time for a cup of tea. This is going to take a while. Then install Koa Common. Yeah, this is also going to take a while. There's enough for two cups of tea in that pot. And Mariah DB server, except won't take it, but it tells you what it doesn't have. Mariah DB server 10.3, which depends on Mariah DB client 10.3. So you just go back and install them. Someone more clever than I can, can reconfigure the packages. But for now, that's what you have to do. Just said this is double time, so it's taking, it's going pretty speedy, speedily. Then you have to fiddle with Apache. Now you create the instance, which I'm calling library. Bit of an anticlimax, isn't it? You have to make a few tweaks. Go in and make sure that it's listening on port 8080 for the staff interface. stuff with Apache. This one's already enabled. So is this one. So restart Apache anyway. Now that is what you need to log in to COA. The thing ending with the at sign. If you can copy it and paste it into something, so much the better. But that is all there is to setting up COA with the command line. Now let's go over to the GUI. Okay, now we've gone over to the IP address colon 8080 or the domain name plus colon 8080. And we can finish the setup from here. First of all, I put in your username, which is COA, and then instance name, in this case, library. I managed to copy the password. A lot of this is just clicking on the blue button, waiting for the next step. Database settings, okay. Now you set up the database. I choose Mark 21 because that's what everyone uses around here. And I'm adding a few of the optional things like matching rules for Mark 21. I'm skipping all the uh, suggested patron types. I'm adding some Z3950 servers. Fault data are loaded. Click here to continue. Now you create a library. I'm calling it LIB. Full name is library. You can go back and change this later. 
you need a patron category for administrator, I'm calling it staff. And it won't expire for 999 months. Now we have to set up an actual administrator. Last name, librarian. First name, the. Card number is, of course, one. Username, librarian. And a password. You also have to create at least one item type. You can add more later. I'm calling this book on the advice of the avenging chicken. And you can change the circulation rules later. You finished, you're ready to use. Librarian and the password. And this should look familiar. Now this is a fully functional instance of Koa. It took maybe well, less than an hour to install on a Raspberry Pi. Um, you can install it on other places too, other Ubuntu servers, cloud servers. Anybody can do it. I'm a community college dropout and I can do it. So let's go on to the next step. Well, yes, but now what? You've got the ILS, but how about the bib records? Well, this is where the barcode scanner comes in handy because just harvest the ISBN from each book. Now, obviously every book is not gonna have an ISBN barcode. Uh, paperbacks from the 80s, 90s have UPCs with the ISBN somewhere else. That's not very helpful. Uh, some of them just have it printed. And of course, some don't have an ISBN at all because they predate ISBN. But still, once you can, we'll cut down a lot on typing. And we're gonna use Z3950 to retrieve them. So what's Z3950? Uh, well, it's a thingy that lets you download catalog records. That's all you need to know right now. Supported by both Koa and MarkEdit. You find the Z3950 server and its configuration information to MarkEdit and Koa. There you go. Put in the information, get back a catalog record. Sometimes. Uh, I'm only using ISBNs here. You can use other fields as well. So if you go to home and then administration and then Z3950 SRU serv servers, uh, you can see what you have. Um, I have on my Pi Library of Congress, New York Public, National Library of Medicine, and Seattle Public Library. It's not comprehensive, and I would add a lot more depending on what library I was trying to uh, find records for. Go to the cataloging interface, new record from Z3950, put it in, here it is, the Cunning Man, Robert, Robertson Davies, import, and there we go. I'm gonna make one exception, search by author, for Z3950, looking for Molly Ivins. You can see, found a lot of her books. But this only does one book at a time. Gee, now if there were only a faster way. Oh, you might guess it is, there it is. Mark edit. What does it do? A lot of you have seen this analogy before. Someday I'll come up with a new one, but it's like a Swiss Army knife. You know, of, you learn a few things, then find out it can do a few more things. A whole lot more. 
and I'm only going to be using a few because I only know how to use a few. If there are other things too, don't ask me. From the Mark Edit main screen, I'm going to choose Z3950's SRU client. Uh, right now, it's set up just to query the Library of Congress. Um, I found a few, just put in a whole batch of ISBNs and only Library of Congress. Uh, something go higgledy piggledy, and you won't get any records at all. So I'm setting up uh, three libraries, Library of Congress, New York Public, and Seattle Public, as you can see at the top. If you click on batch search, I created a file called sample ISBNs. Let's see what happens. We're going to click on batch search in the file. Choose file sample ISBNs. Click search. Give it a name. And here it's searching. You can see most of the time it finds at least one record. Uh, occasionally it finds zero records. And when it's finished, it'll give you a report about what it didn't find. And that's all there is to it. So how did it do? Well, here's the report. I usually found one or maybe two. If it can't find the record three times, well, it was searching three databases, so it didn't find any record at all. You double click on the MRC file, and that starts up Mark Breaker, which will break it into MRK, which is basically a text file. And this is what it looks like. There's a handy feature called record deduplication. So we can search what to try to deduplicate on. In this case, obviously, ISBN. It's my first choice. And a few statistics. Well, there are 29 barcodes in the sample text found 34 ISBNs. After I do deduplicated for ISBN and title, found three and not found five. No, the numbers don't add up. They hardly ever add up. Here's some things that didn't find. Littleton's Britain. Well, I'm probably one of half a dozen people in the US were fans of, I'm sorry, having a clue, so that would make sense. Uh, and here's one starting with 918. I have never seen an ISBN starting with 918, so I figured that's probably a misread. Yeah, I found a few others, or didn't find a few others, excuse me. Then click on the compile button. Give it a name and we'll create an MRC file. Now you upload them to the catalog. Go to Tools, Stage Mark Records for Import, select the file, upload it. It's been staged, so go to Manage Stage Record, Import, there you are. So can the Raspberry Pi handle it? Well, Ubuntu has a program called Top that will let you see what the system load is. Um, it's around 0 0.6, 0 0.23, 0 0.07. That's pretty good uh, when it gets above 1, 2, 14, then starts getting overloaded. 
uh, it's using 19.6% of the CPU. And out of approximately four gigabytes total memory, have about half of that free. So yes, it can handle it. But does it work? Well, here's a staff interface with a record. I did uh, advanced search, looking for books. And here's the one I have with an item record. So it all looks pretty good. And of course, now I have some more statistics. So I tried doing uh, my own library uh, um, at work. Five different collections. We found 94% of circulating books, low of 57% of reserved books. I'm not surprised because there's some review manuals that are held by two or three libraries, including us. Um, I'm also working with a librarian at the Eswatini College of Technology in Mbabane. He sent me a spreadsheet of what they have. And fair to middling, I use the British Library and a few other libraries, but I probably need a good Z3950 server in Africa, which I haven't found yet. And finally, my own collection. Um, the fiction, mystery, and science fiction are low, I think because a lot of those are mass market paperbacks, which tend not to get cataloged. But does it work? Well, sort of. I mean, yes, it's slow. Would I use it in the big library? No. Maybe a small library? Yeah. And of course, they're getting more robust all the time. The pink one has four gigabytes. The one to the top right has two. Got that about a year ago. And probably in the next two or three years, they'll come out with Raspberry Pi 5, which is even more powerful. So yes, I'd say it's worth a try. And that's all.